Good morning and welcome to TNC. My name is Margot and welcome to our digital broadcast. We hope that you enjoy your time with us this morning. And just a, a little bit of an opening and a couple of words of encouragement for you before we go into worship. Yesterday, somebody sent me a video, and it was a guy that wrote a poem to his children, and it started with, what a year this week has been. And I just thought about that, like, what a year this week has been. Um, he's a dad, and he's a parent like me, and he was trying to explain it to his kids about what's been going on. And I just sat down, and I thought about it, and I thought, it has been quite a week. We've been told we've got to be in isolation. Uh, we've been told we've got to be social distancing. And what does that mean for us as families? What does that mean for us as churches, businesses? But more importantly, what does that mean from God for us? What is our purpose in this? Um, but for God, it's just a moment in time. It's just a season that we're all in. And what is a moment of God? It's, it's something that's really small, and it's something that's going to pass. And I think we need to take encouragement with the fact that this too shall pass. It's not forever, it is tricky, it is difficult, we are feeling uncomfortable, but it is going to pass and we just need to rely on God during this time. We need to focus on Him, we need to pray, we need to buckle down and just be in this moment with Him. I'd just like to read to you from 1 Chronicles 16 verse 34 that says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, He is steadfast. His, sorry, his steadfast love endures forever. I think if we stand on a verse like that, this season will pass before we know it. In a couple of months, in a couple of weeks, we're going to look back and we're going to go, we got through this. So as a congregation, I just encourage you just to plug into the word, plug into prayer, love one another, and just spend time with us now in worship and in the word, and then we'll do some more worship, and then we'll close off the service. Thank you.
Hello, church. Uh, good to be with you today. Uh, in the, even in these strange times, it's good to be able to gather around uh, a screen and be able to have church uh, together. I want to remind you that as you are watching that uh, the sermon notes are up on the YouVersion Bible app. So if you could click that on and follow under events, find True North Church so we can all learn together. Even before I begin, I want to say a big, big, big thank you to all of you who are members of True North Church for your generosity, who have given toward the work of ministry here. It is through your generous giving that we are able to uh, beam this morning and even send the material that we've already sent to you. And so, run right about now, we know what's happening in the world. We are under the throes and woes of COVID-19. And there are a few ways we could respond. We could sit at home, enjoy being home, binge watch Netflix forever and a day. Or we can choose to use this time to focus in on our relationships, to drill deep into the lives of the people that we know and we already love. I believe that such a time as this is when we can look inward, do some self-reflection, and be intentional about building these relationships that we already have. And even though we're not able to meet one another physically, I believe that through technology, we can actually take time out of our non-busy lives to be with one another. And so to that end, we are in our relationship series, which we've called It's All About Relationships. I know for some in a world full of woe, full of fear right about now, you'd have thought Psalm 91 would be appropriate to teach on. Or maybe Psalm 18 would be more relevant in order to calm down the nerves just to kind of make you feel better. But I believe that it is through relationships that we are going to overcome and even defeat this virus. Therefore, we should be spending time talking about these human relationships which will help us defeat the virus in time. Because God has not created us to be islands. God has not created us to be isolated. He made us for himself and for one another. We are made for community. Therefore, we should learn, even in this season, how to do community better. This morning, we find ourselves in the book of Ephesians, and we'll be reading from Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 7. Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took the captives captive. He gave gifts to people. But what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower parts of the earth? The one who descended is also what the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. 14. Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body, fitted and knitted together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. And so last time we saw that Paul spoke to us about the unity that we have as believers. And as we continue in our passage, we will see that Paul says to us that this unity that we have in Christ is not some bland sameness. In as much as we are united in Christ, He, Christ, makes the distinction between us by how He gives us spiritual gifts. In other words, there is diversity in our unity. If we could take a step back to verse number 7, which says, Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. This says clearly to us that Jesus is the giver of these gifts. 
He has given these gifts to his church for free, gratis, as we would say here in our part of the world. Therefore, our attitude should never be one of pride, thinking that our gift is better than another believer's gift. And in order to kind of make this clear how Christ is the one who has given us this gift freely, Paul quotes Psalm 68. Now, Psalm 68 is a psalm of victory. It is a psalm that David wrote when he brought back the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. At this time, the nation of Israel was celebrating and rejoicing in the Lord because he had given them victory over their enemies. And as he had given them victory over their enemies, he gave them his presence in the form of the ark as a present or a gift. Then in verse 8, speaking of Psalm 68, Paul says, When he ascended on high, he took the captives captive. He gave gifts to the people. But what does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower parts of the earth. The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. So Paul says, Jesus came down. He left his kingdom as king over all creation to come down and to serve here on earth. He fought and he defeated his enemies. And as he ascended back to heaven, he gave gifts to his church. So our spiritual gifts are not based on merit, but are based on the work that Christ has done for us. All we do is receive the bounty that he has won all by himself. And so just like Israel, we are given victory and a blessing by God. It is not because we have earned these gifts, but Christ lavishly and graciously gives them to us. But Christ doesn't just give us these gifts for us to sit and be fat cats and just enjoy them and have big titles. No. He gives them to us so we can contribute to the health and growth of His church. So if you're a believer watching us today, you should know this, that Christ has given you a gift. He has not excluded you. And because He has given you a gift, He expects you to do something with it. But even as I say that, some of you are retreating because herein lies the problem. Far too many of us believe in the clergy and laity divide. That is, we see the clergy and those who are the pastors. And they are the ones who are supposed to do ministry. And as the laity, we should just sit back, relax, and just enjoy the show. And we cheer and say, go on, go on. But this is not what Jesus intended for his church. He wants every member to exercise his or her gift. Yeah, the pastor's role is to facilitate and to teach others to use their gifts. But he is primarily called to use his gift to serve others. He is not a separate class of Christian. So Paul says, there is no divide in the church. All of us have been given gifts. And as he says that, now he begins to name the gifts. And so this list that we find in Ephesians 4 is not an exhaustive list. In fact, we find four different passages in the Bible that speak of spiritual gifts. We have a list in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 to 10, 28 to 13. In Romans 12, Paul again gives us a list, verses 6 to 8. Peter in 1 Peter 4 and 11, and our passage here, Ephesians 4 and 11. I believe that with the world in turmoil because of COVID-19, there is no better time than now than for the church to be built up to where we are working together as a cohesive unit. When we read the book of Acts, we see that the church is under persecution. The church is being put under siege. But even in those difficult times, the church of Jesus Christ grew more and more and more and more. And I saw... I would say that this season of quarantine can also be a time of revival. 
when we've closed our doors because we don't want to harm others, God can be at work in us. Because we will be more attuned to who he is and what he is doing. And in that way, he can use us to reach those who are far from him. Now, in the midst of what's happening in the world, in the midst of the stock market crashing and the rent tanking, now is not the time for the church to be retreating and hiding, but to dive deep into the pool of spiritual gifts that Christ has given us for his glory. Spiritual gifts are also given so that every member of Christ's body can enforce Christ's victory on the earth. Now, listen to me and listen to me closely. As we use our spiritual gifts here on this earth, we are saying to sickness, disease, powers, and principalities that, principalities that Christ is victorious, that Christ has won the victory. So as he gives us his list of spiritual gifts here in Ephesians, Paul mentions apostles and prophets. And so I know that many of you who live in and around South Africa immediately start thinking of apostle, a man sitting in the front row in a big chair. Paul is not talking about that. The word apostle just means one who is sent out. It's apostolos, one who is a servant of Christ, who is sent out to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. In this specific context, Paul is talking about the first apostles who were directly sent by Jesus. And their role was to establish the church through sound doctrine. I'm talking about guys such as Peter, John, Philip. Those were the first apostles. And that role or the office of apostleship has come to an end because the church has been established. But I hope that we can all agree that there's still lots of work for the church to do. Even though the church is established, we in 2020 still need to advance the gospel and strengthen the church of Jesus Christ. So the work of being sent out carries on. Paul also speaks of prophets. And this applies even more to those of you who might be gifted in prophecy. The primary role of a prophet is not to tell you about the future, that you're going to win the lotto or you're going to meet your man next week. No. The primary role of a prophet is to strengthen, encourage, and comfort believers. And yes, even to bring conviction of sin. At a time when there's so much fear in the world, wouldn't you desire to bring comfort and encouragement to the body? And it's times such as these, when we're scattered, some of us just might be tempted to compromise, to be complacent because we aren't gathering regularly. But those who have the gift of prophecy can ask God for words of knowledge or prophetic utterances that will help those of us who are being a bit lackadaisical to be strong in the Lord. Paul then jumps on to evangelists. And these are people who reach those who are far from God or those who don't have a relationship with God. It might very well be that in the midst of the chaos that is happening in our world, God is trying to get somebody's attention. God is busy saying, hello, hello. Do you see me in the fog? And you could be that person that God uses to reach somebody who is far from him. Now I know some of us would say, but I'm not Billy Graham. I'm not Nicholas Bengu. I'm not even a pastor. How can I do that? You can do it because God has gifted you to do it. Just the other day, I met up with one of our members, and he was telling me how easy it is for him to talk about Jesus to others. That in almost every conversation he has on a daily basis, when people tell him problems, all that rolls out of his mouth is Jesus, 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 Jesus. I was so touched by that because I saw a person who is gifted 
with the gift of evangelism. Such that when others, such that when others speak fear and hopelessness, he lovingly talks to them about the hope that we have in Jesus. And we need more people who are like that, who have a heart to tell the world about the hope and the rock that never shakes. After talk, talking to us about the evangelist, Paul tells us about the gift of pastor-teacher. Now, the primary, the primary role of a pastor has to do with looking after God's people. And the pastor gets his mandate from Jesus himself. Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, the great chief shepherd. And so pastors are the under shepherds who are called to look after God's flock. And because of the enormity of that role, not many are called to this task. But I believe that at times such as this, all of us should embrace that call and help pastor one another. Even if it's just for a little while. Because truth is, none of us have it all together. But all of us holding, metaphorically that is, holding each other's hands can help each other along the way. But the second aspect of the pastor teacher, the teacher part, is talking about biblical teaching. And biblical teaching allows us to grow in the faith and be able to withstand false teaching. And boy, do we need more of that today more than we've ever needed it. As somebody would say, because there are all manner of strange things that are associated rather with COVID-19. If you turn on the radio every now and then, you hear some people say, hey, this is the end of the world. Others have said that, ah, the virus is God's curse on some ethnic groups. But if we spend time teaching the gospel, we will push back this nonsense. Because we will understand that we are secure that in that God is definitely in control. God has not given up. He has not abdicated and left his throne. He is still in control. And he has certainly not cursed certain ethnic groups. He is a God who is loving. And he's a God who wants to draw all people unto him. And at the end of it all, gospel teaching tells, tells us that God's kingdom will prevail regardless of what's happening in the world. Even now, some of you parents are getting an opportunity to work on your biblical teaching skills. We've sent out Kids Church mat material so that you can have church at home with your kids. As one parent just said to me recently, I'm spending more time reading my Bible so I can teach my kids. And now that you have more time in your diary and privacy, you can really pray. You can take time to pray. You can pray that a cure would be found. You, would, you can pray that God would open our eyes to ways we can strengthen our immunity. We can pray for those who are fearful, people who out of fear don't make the best decisions. We can pray and ask God to help them. We can pray for our government. Ask God to give them the wisdom that they need in order to help curb this virus. Pray. And dare I say that we will see some miracles because of the Holy Spirit at work in and through His church. So in this season, we should be asking God to use us because He has gifted us. God, would you use us to make a difference in the world that is looking half empty? And I know right about now, you have this question in the back of your mind. What is my gift? How do I discover my gift? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here are a few ways that can help you. Number one, you can get involved where you see a need. As you look around, what is not being done that you know that you could do well? Get involved. Secondly, you can try some things out. 
as I said about parents teaching their kids, maybe as you're teaching your kid, you kind of feel something that, hmm, I'm good at this. I want to teach more and more of God's word. Number three, ask God. If God is the one who's gifted you, who better than to ask him, God, what is my gift and how can I use that gift in this time? And finally, passion. What are you passionate about? For some of us, our spiritual gifts lie in areas and things that we're most passionate about. So as we talk about gifts, here's the bottom line. We're all called to serve each other through our spiritual gifts. Think about it. Wouldn't it just be radical if over the next few weeks, we would really flex our gift muscles to serve the world around us? Just imagine how transformed we would be as a community and how different our reputation as Christians would be. That the world saw Christians and they were serving. They were doing some incredible things. Not because we're special, but because God has gifted us. Because God has called us. Verse 16 of our text, Paul says, From him the whole body, fitted, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. And that is what the church is all about. A body that is fitted and knitted together. It's not about superstar and crowds cheering them on. No. The church of Jesus Christ works together to be a blessing to each other. So as we ride out this virus storm, let us see how we as members can promote the growth of the body by doing our part. As we've been saying, and we'll keep on saying this, if at any moment you need prayer, you need somebody just to pray with you when you're super worried about your business, when you have a question, would you reach out to somebody? Would you reach out? So we can continue to be the church. I know we've been talking a lot about social distancing of late. But social distancing does not mean isolation. Let us use the gifts that God has given us to serve one another and change the world for God's glory. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for our time together. Thank you, God, for time in worship time in the word that even though we're scattered we're together by the power of the holy spirit so god we pray for our nation today we pray lord god for our governmental leaders we pray lord god for our citizens we pray lord god that all of us would respond in a way of unity that god we would get behind one another as we combat the virus I pray, God, for supernatural wisdom, God, that you'd give scientists, Lord God, answers that they're seeking. I pray that, Lord God, as your church, we would not be idle, we would not sit back, but as your word exhorts us, that we would use our spiritual gifts, Lord God, to strengthen our communities, to be people who serve in the name of Jesus. God, we pray to you, God, we ask you, God, that would you intervene in a miraculous way. I pray, God, that you would calm our hearts. That, Lord God, as business halts, as schools have been stopped, that, God, you would calm our hearts. Bring peace to us. I pray, God, for families that are now together all the time. I pray, God, that may there be joy. I pray, God, for the most vulnerable people in our nation. 
that as believers, as government, would all, Lord God, be able to come alongside them. And that, Lord God, all of us would come through this and give you all the honor and the praise at the end of it.
thank you for spending this time with us this morning. Uh, we hope that you will have a blessed week, a safe week. Enjoy your families. Enjoy the time that you have. And um, we will see you again next week. Same place, same time. Thank you.